Hey mamas, Sam McCormick here. Today I wanted to talk about highly processed foods. Now this is not something that we generally think about in our American diet, um, which is aptly named as the sad diet, the standard American diet, it's very sad. Um, but in America, we consume a lot of highly processed foods. And in fact, we eat more highly processed foods today than we ever have before. A trend that is especially pronounced among children and adolescents who get a whopping 67% of their daily calories from these foods. And at the same time, nutrition research continues to uncover ways in which highly processed foods are detrimental to human health. And they have been implicated in a host of chronic diseases ranging from diabetes to cancer, which is especially concerning if you are a mama because our kids are consuming these foods and they're causing all of these diseases. And I know, especially for me, it is one of my huge fears that my kids will get sick. So this is why I really wanted to talk about this today in our group. Um, so you may be wondering what exactly are highly processed foods and why are they so bad for you? Well, highly processed foods consist primarily of extracted or synthesized ingredients. Um, hallmarks of these processed foods include a lack of fiber, high amounts of added sugar, even in foods that don't taste sweet, um, salt and fat, and long ingredient lists that are often full of hard to pronounce substances. Um, the best way to think of processed foods is if you can't go outside and find it in nature somewhere, it is a processed food. Now, these industrially formulated products first gained popularity in the U.S. in the mid-20th century as manufacturers began leveraging technological advances to cheaply produce convenient, highly palatable foods with long shelf lives. Um, this actually happened after World War II when women started going to the workplace. No longer were we women staying at home cooking dinner, so we needed an alternative because at that point our men were not staying home either. So we needed something quick and easy to make in the oven. And this is when these foods started to be developed and mass produced and promoted to our country. But unfortunately, they're really, really bad for our health. The average supermarket today is stocked with thousands of ultra processed foods. Um, some of the most common include, surprisingly, white flour, which means that white pasta and white bread fall in this category, potato chips, pretzels, sweetened juice, soft drinks, which is soda pop, sweetened breakfast cereals, margarine, reconstituted meat products, such as salami and hot dogs, candy, and cookies and cakes. Now, mounting scientific evidence has suggested that highly processed foods are a key culprit behind some of the most chronic diseases and health conditions, which include diabetes, obesity, heart disease, cancer, acne, and IBS and IBD. One of the smartest ways to improve your health is to avoid all highly processed foods completely and adopt a whole food plant-based diet, which is rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes with some lightly processed ingredients such as whole grain pasta and tofu. I'm not a huge tofu fan but if you are, more power to you. <laughs> if you're not ready to commit to a lifestyle transformation all at once, I totally understand because I did not go on my health and wellness journey and switch everything all at once, it was a process. Um, simply opting for more whole plant foods and fewer of the high processed foods can make a real impact on your health. Start simple, just begin by adding something whole to each meal. For example, add a piece of fresh fruit to your breakfast meal, a few raw veggies to your lunch, and some steamed greens or other fresh veggies to your dinner. Next, begin swapping out highly processed foods for lightly or even moderately processed foods. So instead of a sweet, ready-to-eat breakfast cereal, select something like moistly or shredded wheat or oatmeal. Gradually start making your own moistly or cooked grains for breakfast. Instead of white bread or white rice, select whole grain bread and brown, red, or black rice. I would also recommend picking at least one whole food, plant-based vegan recipe to try each week, whether it's a soup, salad, baked good, or entree. So this way, as you continue cooking these recipes, 
you can find ones that you like and work them into your weekly rotation. So eventually after some process, you will find recipes that you really enjoy and you will find that you are a whole food plant-based person as if by accident. That's kind of what happened to us. So if you guys have any questions, put them down below. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you guys have an amazing day.